Hey there, so happy that you found my channel. If you're catching this on a Facebook Live, great to see you and come on in and share this because I think a lot of people are going to find value in the topic, which today is about bullying. It's about narcissistic abuse and it is about how to handle yourself when you are a victim of this disaster called a smear campaign. So I'm going to break it out. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how these insidious, narcissistic little monsters operate so that you can spot them, so that you can handle them, and so that you can be an advocate for yourself while dealing with these people. Now, this can apply to you if you're dealing with a narcissistic, abusive type in a relationship, friendship, it could be at school, it could be at the workplace. So these people are everywhere and they are little kids, they are teenagers, they are in every decade of life, they are insidious. And so I wanna dive in um, with some information that I'm hopeful that will help you all out there if you are being victimized, having your mind the question if you're even normal if you're if, if you did something wrong sometimes these people they're like making you think that you're the you're the villain that you're the one who's wrong you're the one who has the problem meanwhile it is not the case so let's um dive right on right right on in um i'll begin by saying i am lisa concepcion i'm a certified professional life coach who specializes in dating and relationships and oftentimes when I go through the path of relationship coaching, oftentimes narcissistic abuse is a hot topic that comes up. So I wanted to make sure that I covered it and I did it in a way that could be applicable to a lot of what we see going on in the world right now and also what might be going on in your own life. So let's get into it, shall we? First of all, it's important to know that narcissistic people are very empty and self-loathing. So they can be beautiful, they can look amazing, they can be you know, super popular and have money and all these things, but they, at the core of their being, they believe that they are disgusting and that they are fundamentally awful. And so what they do is they overcompensate by latching on to people who can elevate them. They're very status seeking. And so a narcissist is the type of person that like if you are friends with them, they will suck your energy. They will make the entire friendship about them. And you'll think that you're best friends with this person. You think that you can tell them anything and that you have a good time together and it's, you know, totally cool and when they have you in their good graces, you're like the best. You're my best friend, my best friend, my best friend. But the second they decide that maybe they get a boyfriend or they get um, a promotion at work or they move jobs or they um, start to hang with a different crowd, right? I see this a lot with the mentor coaching that I do for teenagers, right? So oftentimes parents you know, they tell me, Lisa, like, you need to coach my my daughter or my son or whatever on confidence on these different things because nobody wants to listen to their parents. I mean, do you remember when you were a teenager? I remember when I was a teenager. I didn't want to hear anything from my parents. But if I had a separate person, a third party person that can just listen to me and give me straight up no bullshit advice, I'd be like into it. Right. And I can say anything to and be like, they're never going to judge me. So when I work with these types of clients, I often tell them, and we have these discussions about the narcissists and how if you find that you're in a clique at school or whatever, or like I said, older people, your workplace, um, even you know if you're, if you're in a relationship, a spouse, right? You start being on the outs, they'll take like all your friends away, right? They'll take, they'll, they'll smear your name, They'll start saying rumors and telling personal things awful, right? And so a lot of times people who are going through this form of bullying, because that's what it really is, they are afraid. 
So what we're seeing play out on social media is a form of narcissistic abuse. In if you have different points of views on things, people are afraid that they are going to be censored. They're afraid that they're going to lose their platform. They're going to lose their social media. Let me just do this real quick so that I always forget to do this. Like I apologize. So I don't want any interruption. So, you know, people are living their life in fear now. They're, they're worried that their point of view isn't allowed. And so when you're dealing with narcissistic people, they're going to shut you down and try to bully you and silence you and make you feel like you are nothing and they are everything and you are to acquiesce to whatever their demands are. Oftentimes in, in friendship situations, you'll have a situation where these people, they discard you. One minute you're best friends, next minute you're kicked to the curb. It could be in a relationship. One minute you're dating, everything is amazing. Next minute ghosting, you're like, did I do something wrong? You reach out to them, write them a letter, write them an email, what happened? What, they don't even respond. But then you'll hear through Grapevine or you'll see it play out where they launch this smear campaign against you. They call you every name in the book. Disaster. So we want to make sure that you're clear that these people have massive issues. Like this isn't you. You're fine. You know, everybody's quirky. Everybody has their thing, right? But these people really hate themselves and they project that self-hatred out on other people and they're always maneuvering and they're trying to get people to give them what is called supply narcissistic supply it's in the form of attention it comes in the form of um money sometimes advancement in life career opportunity they're very opportunistic um, if one person can get them ahead versus another person, they're going to be like, yeah, see ya with no empathy, no remorse, you know, people, normal people, right? When they go through breakups, even if they know it's time to move on from a relationship, they're still going to be sad. They're still going to, you know, have their moments alone. They're going to be like, you know, whether it's a month, two, three, whatever, however long they're going to have thoughts of this person and the memories that they had together and you know they're gonna get a little melancholic they're gonna feel something they're gonna feel something you know it's always gonna be but with narcissistic people no they look at people like chess pieces on a chessboard easily maneuverable and then checkmate boom you're out so be mindful of that um let's see what else they talked about that i talked about oh so these people are also also incredibly morally corrupt and bankrupt morally bankrupt and corrupt meaning they don't have morals they don't have character they they completely lack any of that they are all for the opportunity they take a approach to their agenda um and you'll hear this out there we will do whatever it takes by any means necessary so like doing whatever it takes is fine, right? I want to launch my business. I want to grow my business. I'll do whatever it takes. But there's always that caveat of as long as it's ethical and it doesn't hurt any or harm anybody, you know, narcissists don't believe that. They are literally saying by any means necessary. That's the piece of it that makes the difference. So when you hear somebody say like, I want to do this and I'm going to do whatever it takes, know that they mean I'm going to do whatever it takes, meaning I'm going to bust my ass. I'm going to work real hard. I'm going to, I'm going to break through comfort zones. If I have to talk to these people and I'm a little intimidated by it, I'm going to just push through and I'm going to do it anyway. That's a good, whatever it takes attitude, right? But with the narcissist, it is, I'm going to do whatever it takes by any means necessary. That means I will take you out if I, for me to succeed, I will take out this group. I will, you will be uh, uh, removed, canceled. Um, this way of being will be no longer if it suits my agenda. So you have to be very, very li careful and listen to the language that these people use. Insidious, godless people. So once you deal with this, uh, you know, demon of a person, or, um, you know, group of people, what do you do, right? So now you're being confronted, you're being bullied, you're being harassed, you're dealing with this disaster of people. 
like what do you do how do you how do you like go through your your day because it's easy to say yeah they're ridiculous they feel like they're nothing and they're just projecting their nothingness out on everybody but when you're in it and you're living it and you're the recipient of the wrath not to mention you had potentially an emotional connection to this person whether it's a a friend, a lover, ex-spouse. Oh my God. So you have the double whammy of grieving the friendship more than a double whammy. A whole different slew of stuff happens in your mind. One, you're grieving them. You're like, you were my best friend. You were, you were my person. You were my person. I told you everything. Everything you knew of me for years. Talked every day. And now you cut me off nothing. There's pain in that. There's a loss in that. It, it's as if um, they morphed into another person completely. And that person that you knew them to be is dead. It is no longer. So there's a grief that comes with that. Second thing that comes with that is your inability to trust yourself. You're sitting there like, I thought I had good judgment. This person was my friend. This person was my, my lover, my husband, my wife, whatever, right? And now I question my judgment. How can I be so blind to see that this was right under my nose? This existed all along. I saw the red flags. I saw they had tendencies of being this kind of way. I saw how they were with other people. But I never paid attention because I never thought they'd be like that with me. And now here we are. So there's fear. Right? So first it's grief, then there's a little bit of fear. I can't trust myself. What if I meet somebody else? How am I going to be friends with somebody else? How am I going to get involved with somebody else romantically, whatever? It's a logical question. You would be afraid. You'd be like, I, I can't trust myself to keep myself safe. It's a big, big issue. So certain things that you can do when dealing with mm -hmm. this are the following. Number one, go no contact with these people. I'm telling you like, no contact. Get them off of your social media. Get them out of your phone. No contact, no contact, no contact. Now, in a situation where you might be living with this person, you might be um, at school with this person, where you're like in classes, you're seeing this person all the time. Maybe it's a workplace situation where you have projects and things that you're working with and obviously going no contact is way more difficult physically when you're in a situation where you are physically close to this person. But... And this is the work I help people do. Energetically, you absolutely can go no contact with a person. You can master being in a room with somebody and treating them as if they are not even there, as if they don't even exist, as if they are a picture on the wall. Nothing. You could glance right by it and keep going with your life. And um, oftentimes, they will roll their eyes when you talk they will do these little microaggressions where like they'll you know laugh at you or they'll look at somebody else as if judging you get your armor your energetic armor on point and you let that stuff roll off of you like a duck and what i love doing is looking at them right after they do that microaggression and stare them down and in your mind, while you're staring them down, you look at them and you don't say this out loud, but you say it in your mind as you're staring them down. And you look at them like, I see you, I see what you're doing, and I'm not having it. And you hold your gaze and you stare them down until they look away. You do not break their eye contact until they look away. That is a neuro-linguistic and a, and a body, uh, a, a nonverbal communication tactic to show um, standing your ground that you're not a victim, basically. Somebody comes at you and you stare at them and you don't even, you don't have to get in their space, nothing, but you just stare at them as if you are just sizing them up. I see you. I see exactly what you're doing and I'm not having it. And you can just think that in your head and repeat it to yourself. I guarantee you they will look away or they will look down in shame because they are deeply inside. They know what they are doing is wrong, but they don't care. And so when you look at them like you aren't rattling my cage, honey, 
you can continue this whole little, you know, bullying thing and coming at me with your big mouth and whatever, but I'm not having it. And then you continue on with your life. Catch them alone if you absolutely have to confront them. Catch them alone. They tend to be very brave when they are behind a computer or with a bunch of people. But when you catch them alone, you will find very quickly that they are weak, very weak. And if you pull them aside and you say, hey, listen, this thing between us, it ends today. You understand me? It's done. You come at me crooked, you're gonna get my wrath. So just be no, be, have it be known that I see you, I see what you're doing, and I'm not having it. And if you catch them alone and you hit them like that, they're, they'll back off. They're gonna back off. They'll be a little more quiet around you. Um, you know, they, they, don't like, they don't like it when you're self-loving, when you advocate for yourself, they don't like it. So you're gonna also establish some boundaries. Again, I said no contact. You're gonna act as if they're part of the furniture. You're just gonna look at them like, you know, they're insignificant. Um, because that's what they want. They want significance. That's what they're craving. So when you when you make it that they're insignificant, they can't touch you. They're gonna hop off you and go to another supply source, and they're gonna and they're they're gonna be like, you can't go to her. She she just doesn't. Her cage is not rattled by me. Um, and so the other thing that you're going to do is find a new tribe, find new friends, new people. Honey, it's about quality, not quantity. If you have two really good friends and really good allies, whether it's family members, whatever your situation is, wherever this narcissist is, if you have your little magical tribe, you plus two, honey, that's all you need, right? You plus two. Um, and then finally, you're going to really know and understand at the core of your being where your value worthiness truly comes from. It does not come from the narcissist. It does not come from their validation, their approval of you. Your creator is the keeper of your worthiness. Remember that always. Your love, your unconditional love, your value, your worthiness comes from a higher power. It comes from collective consciousness. It comes from God. It comes from God force, whatever word you want to use for it, source energy. That is the thing to connect to. And you only will have your cage rattled by these narcissistic freaks when you are not connected to source, when you are not connected to the divinity inside of you. And they know that, and that's why they rattle your cage. So make it a point to always be centered and connected to yourself. That is something that I offer through my coaching. I help people to connect to that divine self, that inner being ass kicker self, confident, mm -hmm. secure, the true inner you that gets a little dingy and dim when dealing with idiot people who want to dim your sparkle. So I am Lisa Concepcion. I hope this message helped you out. Please share it if you think other people in your circles can benefit from it. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can at lovequestcoaching.com. That's lovequestcoaching.com. Thanks so much, and I look forward to hearing from you all soon. Bye.